Hello, it's Wednesday, August the 5th, and welcome to our uh, mini Bible series study as we prepare for Sunday, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost, August 9th, 2020. And today we'll be looking at the second reading from Paul's letter to the Romans in the 10th chapter, verses 5 through 15. I begin by reading the introduction for you, and then the reading, and then I'll share some reflections with you. A right relationship with God is not something we achieve by heroic efforts. It is a gift received in the proclamation whose content is Jesus Christ. This proclaimed word creates our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, Christian proclamation is an indispensable component of God's saving actions. And Paul writes, Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near to you, on your lips and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Here ends the reading. Now... What is Paul saying? A couple of weeks ago, and from time to time, I have mentioned that the letter to the Romans is Paul's most developed theological statement. Therefore, it is also Paul's most complicated letter to understand. In last week's reflections, I said that Romans chapters 9 through 11 are Paul wrestling with the idea of God's faithfulness, especially to the Jews, the ones who do not accept Jesus as the Messiah, and how we as Christians need to believe that God is faithful to the Jews, if we are to feel confident that God will remain faithful to Christians. What we discover in these verses is not some kind of scriptural proof meant to convince people. Rather, Paul is collecting biblical voices to provide significance to his theological claims, Jesus as Messiah or Christ in the Greek. As a skilled theologian and interpreter of scripture, Paul puts forward a scriptural conversation for the Roman church to hear, a conversation in which, in Paul's arrangement, Jesus Christ sits at the center of the message. All the words gravitate around Jesus, thus acquiring new meaning as they reveal God's salvation work through Jesus Christ. Paul puts forward the teaching that just as God's instructions which we sometimes call the law, came near through Moses, Jesus comes near as the culmination of the law. Based on 
chapter 10, verse 4, the verse right before this reading, some may argue that Jesus was the end of the law, as if the law ceased to exist. Jesus himself said that he did not come to abolish the law, rather he came to fulfill the law. The law ends, that is, it finds its culmination through the incarnate Jesus. Jesus accomplishes what the law could not. The law was debilitated as it was by the power of sin. So, Paul says, there's no need for us to go up to heaven to seek Jesus. He already came to us. Nor is there any need to descend into the grave to find Jesus because he's not there. He is risen. Paul proclaims Jesus as the good news about God's faithfulness and a message that in turn produces faith in the hearers or the readers in our case. Verses 11 through 13 here assure us that this message is for everyone. No group can withhold this good news from any other group. There is going to be no distinctions. God's salvation is available to all people. This is a really bold statement for Paul to make at a time of the first century when Jews and Gentiles were vastly separated. And we are mistaken if we think that this is a statement about people. It is not. This is a statement about God. God shows no partiality. People, we always show partiality. In this letter, especially chapters 9 through 11, Paul is reflecting on how it can be that so many of his fellow Jews have, in his own words, not submitted to God's righteousness. Why has the gospel apparently made no impact upon them? Paul contends in chapter 10, verses 5 through 13, as we're looking at today, that the gospel has been made attainable and available to all of them. So this pushes the question, has something gone wrong? And what is God's plan now? These questions are driving Paul in his theological reflections in the chapters of Romans verses 9 through 11. Paul's thinking here is similar to what Paul wrote in Romans chapters 1 to 3, where he stated that Jews and Gentiles alike are estranged from God and under sin's power. Paul closes the distance some of uh, where between Jews and Gentiles by saying, all suffer <laughs> from disobedience to God in some form or another. Yet for Paul, there is good news in this. God still saves people out of those sinful conditions. In last week's readings, we reflected on what Paul has to say about God's character. In this week's reading, we reflect on what God has to say about God's character and how God relates to us, his people. God's word of life, the good news of salvation, remains present among all people, ready to be encountered through Jesus Christ. What does it mean that God's word is near to us? It means it's right here. It's right now. No one is any nearer to God's kingdom than anyone else. It is for everyone. Thank you for joining me again today. We continue our journey along these mini Bible series. 
as we look at the readings for the upcoming Sunday, August 9, 2020, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Take care and have a great day. Stay God-blessed.